Not too long ago, I posted a video online with this picture in it. After that, I saw a whole bunch of comments where people were asking me how to do that. So that's what this video is about. We're going to see how to make pictures that look like this one. Or this one. And we really have to end on a happy note. So what we're seeing here is something called a graph or a network, and it comes up in a lot of different fields and is used as a very common abstraction of a lot of data. In this case, what it is, is it's a bunch of points and they're connected with lines. So you can think of each point as representing a person or a computer on the internet, and the lines are representing either something like a friendship or a physical connection amongst those computers. Studying these things is important because it allows us to understand how the data that emerges in the real world naturally organizes itself. We don't think it's completely random, nor do we think it's completely structured. But that's all the graph theory you need to know to understand this picture. We're going to walk through how to do it. At the end of this video, I'll talk about how I thought of doing it in the first place. And spoiler alert, it wasn't my idea. Someone else came up with it first. So the way I'm going to do this video is we're going to take some of the examples I've worked up and I'm just going to recode them and do a screen recording. And periodically I'll jump back to talking to the camera, but by and large it's not going to be me explaining, it's going to be me doing it. So what you're going to see in the screen recording is me going through all of the stuff that I need to do to reproduce it. That's going to be long and boring, and so the screen recording is probably going to be greatly accelerated. Now, in case you're wondering, I do have a cheat sheet, but I'm going to attempt to use it as little as possible. We're going to do this all in the Julia language. That said, uh, everything you can do here, you can do in MATLAB or Python. If you are wondering what a good project would be, it would be to adapt some of these ideas to your programming language as well. And if you do, please post a note in the comments. And with that, let's get started.
what we've done now is we've got code that puts up dot where the picture is dark. So this is the nodes of our graph. And now what we have to do is figure out how to, one, get some more nodes that represent things outside of just our image. So it looks like a little bit more interesting than just uh, the words of the image. And two, we need to figure out a way of connecting them. There are two ways of connecting them. The first is if you want all of the edges to be planar, that is, you want the edges never to cross, then there's this thing called a Delaunay triangulation. There's a Julia package to do it, so we are just going to use that Julia package. The other way to do these is to connect them based on how far away the points are. There's a couple ways of doing this. We can say connect every point to the 10 points nearest by or closest by. The other way to do it is to take a point and connect every one within a specific radius. There are lots of different ways of connecting these up. And so if you have other ideas, definitely explore them. That's why we make all the code available. So let's get back to the code. Hey, look at this. This is something I did a while back. Apparently I ran into the same problem. It's good to see that everyone fixed this. Super cool. Thanks, community. we are going to see how to generate edges that make a planar graph with Voronoi diagrams or Delaunay tessellations. These are 
geometric constructs that take in a set of points and return a triangulation, a set of triangles. We aren't going to be interested in the triangles, which is what most people are interested in. We are just interested in the edges because the edges give us the graph that we want to build. This wasn't an idea that I came up with. I actually saw it in a paper quite a few years ago, and the person who showed it to me was Mohsen Bayati. The paper and algorithm were doing automatic clustering. To illustrate the ideas, they clustered a catchpa, and each letter of the catchpa became a cluster. How might these pictures be useful? You might be wondering, well, by and large, they're not, because we're creating them to look good, not so much to mean anything scientifically. That said, these are closely related to something called a stochastic block model, and so by using some of those connections, you might be able to make pictures for your own studies or your own scientific talks or your own little examples that would have quite a bit more relevance than the ones that we're seeing here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to check out the code online. You can use it to make pictures and videos like these ones. If you come up with anything fun, let me know about it. Post a note in the comments here, or you can tweet the picture at me. I'm at dglike on Twitter, or just use the hashtag words and graphs. Here are a few extensions I think would be interesting to look at. And here's a little problem I found with the code after looking at it after I'd recorded these. See if you can explain why, or ask about it in the comments. Enjoy!